your home for worship and the word on K-Wave 107.9. Hey, good morning. I'm Bob Shaw. How about we uh, come together live right now for prayer, lots of encouragement as we navigate life together. You can watch us live as well right now on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. And this morning, let's welcome Pastor Dave Gunlock from Grace Fellowship Church in Costa Mesa. So good to have you back, Pastor. Thanks. Good to be with you again. Uh, Very, very um, excited to hear what you have to say and what verse you picked out this morning. Yeah, I picked one that uh, we're probably all familiar with, Hebrews 10, 24, that says, Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. <laughs> and what's been striking me lately is that word spur. And I've just been thinking about that image. You know, a, a spur is something that, that someone riding a horse used to wear, yeah. right? And and a horse maybe was stagnant or just kind of standing there. Yeah, uh, and yeah. Just, you, right? Yeah. Little, little prodding, little uh, <laughs> little spurring. Yeah. And uh, I, I've been thinking lately, you know, we... We all find ourselves uh, like that horse sometimes, right? We 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 end up in this place of spiritual discouragement or uh, maybe just stagnation or apathy. And and what we need is fellow brothers and sisters to come alongside us and kind of say, "Hey, come on, you know, let's keep going, let's keep moving, let's keep uh, loving, let's keep moving towards good deeds." And and so what I think is needed in those times is we just need to constantly remind ourselves of the gospel. Mm. God is good. God loves us. His grace is with us. He's working in all things for our good. And then we need to come alongside one another and, and remind each other of that good news so that we continue to move forward towards love and good deeds. So I would love to just pray for folks today that, that, that we would each be encouraged by the gospel and that we would consider how to encourage one another. Please do. So, Father, at the beginning of this new day, uh, we just come to you again, uh, reminded that we all need to hear the gospel daily. We need your spirit to remind us of these deep and wonderful truths about your goodness and your love and your grace for us. And so would you impress on our hearts again the gospel in a way that encourages us and spurs us today? And would you help us have eyes and ears for those around us who need that gentle, loving spurring, prodding, that we might walk together on this journey of faith. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ah, thanks so much. Much more to say, though, on Hebrews 10, 24. We're going to unpack that a little more, talk about what spurring on means as Pastor Dave Gunlock and I take our conversation exclusively to our Facebook page and YouTube channel. So don't miss out. And here on K-Wave, Pastor Greg Laurie points out Jesus' sacrifice at Calvary is directly related to the Passover. That's next on A New Beginning. So, Pastor, how do we go about avoiding becoming that person who who, who goes around on Facebook and trolls people who disagree with us? (laughs) And right, you know, and and just, just to start arguments, and, you know, because we're so discouraged about what's going on. And, by the way, it is easy with what's going on these days and what's going been going on this whole year um, yes. with with what's happening these days. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. Yeah, I, I think I think it begin, you know not becoming that person that you just described. It, it really, to me, the older I get, I think it begins with us taking in the good news every day mm-hmm. ourselves. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I think of it as like like a meal. Like we even talk about the words our daily bread, yeah. right? And so I wake every, every day and my heart already has a set of anxieties, ambitions, defenses that are already kind of there. And what I need to do is just start the day by going to God with that and saying, God, I need to, I need to just eat <laughs> your yeah. grace. I need to eat your truth and your promises and your goodness. And that puts me in a place that I'm actually, I think, in a better place to, to actually love people rather than try to correct them all the time, like you're saying, or... Yeah you know, try to defend my own position, it puts me in a better place of security because I'm, I'm living in the gospel to then say, hey, I want to invite you into the grace that I'm receiving, you know, every day. Mm-hmm. But that, I think that just takes a daily feeding and reminder of all these things that we all know, you know, so, but we just need to, to live within every day yeah. and then try to offer that to one another. I, I do think, you know, this, this verse, I like how it begins. We said, let us consider how to spur one another on it. And the consider word is, it's a, it's a word of thoughtfulness. And, um, you know, it, it actually takes a creative thoughtfulness. Sometimes I need to think of a friend and go and actually take the time to step back and ask what would be encouraging to them right now? What, 
would be helpful, but that takes a prayerful thoughtfulness uh, rather than just, you know, living in the moment. Yeah. I don't have the statistics, but I suspect there are a good number of believers out there that aren't equipped, that they're believers yes. and they're going to heaven. That's that's not the issue. The issue is they're not mm-hmm. equipped, meaning that they don't read the the Bible every day. They don't read the Word, yeah. and they don't see how that fits into their lives, or they don't have time for it. And hey, I'm just as guilty. I, I've been there. I've I've mm-hmm. I've had spells where I, I didn't read the Bible for months, to, much to my detriment. So how do we mm-hmm. develop that discipline to uh, you know get up every morning and read the Word, have that have that a vital part of like you know breakfast, toast, juice, milk, and delicious Bible verses? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think you have to figure it out for yourself. I mean, everybody's different, but I, I do think we have to. My sense is we have to know ourselves, and we have to know what's going to work for us. So mm-hmm. some of us just don't have the internal motivation to do that. So we need to know that. And for us, that's going to mean I need an accountability partner. I need to, like, you know, call that one friend and say, hey, can we have a phone conversation once a week where we've already picked out some verses we're going to read during the week, and we're going to just spend 10 minutes, you know, on Friday talking about what we read, because that's the accountability that I need yeah. um, versus other people who are internally motiv- motivated. Some people are morning people. Some people are evening people. I, I will say for myself, I-, I think, like you mentioned, breakfast and the Word. I think, I think being in the Word in prayer is best done at the front end of the day because it yeah. sets up your whole day. And what I'm learning for myself is the discipline of a of a morning devotion actually starts the night before. Yeah. And it's it's actually the discipline of going to bed at a certain time. Um, because if I go to bed late, I'm I'm gonna blow through that alarm. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pass up on that on that devotional. And usually I'm staying up late because I'm watching too much TV. You know, I'm so <laughs> right. So I actually think the discipline of a morning devotional begins with the discipline of probably a technology, you know, shutting down technology at a certain time the night before so that I'm, I'm asleep by a certain time that sets me up well to, to wake up. And, yeah. uh, but I think that have, doing it with other people is, for most of us, it's just not going to happen on our own. And, yeah. and that's okay. I think we, we recognize our weaknesses and then we, we, work, we, you know, we figure out what's going to work for us given you know, what, what we struggle with. And, and by the way, I think all excuses for for not reading the Bible have been removed from the table. If you're that kind of person who, <laughs> if you're that kind of person who um, just kind of reads the Bible like a textbook and falls asleep in the middle of a passage, like me, you know, it's mm. it's almost mm-hmm. like it's almost like doing homework. The Bible is available in so many things, in audio form, in video form. Uh, now more than mm-hmm. ever, right now, media. There's U version, mm-hmm. which has tons, tons of devotionals, which you can mm-hmm. really, really sink into. So. No excuse there, but we also have to um, we have to encourage others, right? Spur one another. Right. So how do right. we spur one another on? How do we uh, encourage our fellow believers to to do that without sounding you know holier than thou? You know? yeah, totally. Yeah, I, I, that's a. I think that's. I think the way you have said the question is exactly the the challenge it yeah. is is what is that loving, gracious, gentle prodding, uh, and I. I don't. I don't have a great answer to that. It's, it's the right question. I, I think there's a. Um, there's certainly we can invite people into what we're experiencing and, and the encouragement that that's been um, that feels inviting rather than condemning, or, right, or or judging. Um, but I. Th- I think it's hard. I, I think that's why these, these things done in community is best. I mean, I think you could to be able to come to a friend and say, "Hey, I've, I've been experiencing some joy." through this, would you be up for, but I could use some more help and accountability. Yeah. Would you be up for joining me in this? And even if it's once a month, we, we just kind of talk about what we're learning. I mean, that, that feels like a, a, a warm, gracious invitation that I wouldn't receive as being, you know, holier than now. Yeah. But I do think it's, it's a, it's tricky. It's a hard one. If it's, if it's a close friend, I have no problem getting in their face. I mean, you know, that's what <laughs> right. friends are for, right? Sometimes it's yeah, tough it, love. Yeah. Sometimes, hey, dude, uh-huh. You're not in the word. That's why you're in this problem yeah. right now. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I guess, you know, different people, different methods, right? Yes, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Well, this was great. Uh, uh, Pastor Dave Gunlock, uh, thank you so much from Grace Fellowship Church, Costa Mesa. Make sure you visit the church website, gracefellowshipchurch.org. By the way, are you doing uh, services, outdoor services or anything? 
We're not currently. We're doing a lot of home gatherings. Okay. So, but we're we're doing our, our online services every every Sunday. Okay. Yeah. Great. Well, vill- uh, visit uh, Grace Fellowship job. GraceFellowshipChurch.org <laughs> for more information and uh, service times. Pastor, thanks again for coming together with us this morning. Yeah. It was a great uh, devotional. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great to be with you. Uh, join us again tomorrow morning uh, live at around 825 for more devotions and prayer. Uh, tomorrow we have ba- Pastor Bill Buffington, Senior Pastor at Calvary Chapel, Inglewood. And right now on K-Wave, don't forget to join Pastor Greg Laurie and A New Beginning. Until tomorrow, K-Way family, spur someone on today, support them, and we encourage you and we pray for you continually. God bless you.